start by turning the control valve to the pilot position so the water heater won't be firing during the repair. Shut off the cold water supply entering the water heater. An important factor to account for when purchasing a replacement drain valve is the shank length. Your replacement valve has to have a shank length equal to or greater than the original drain valve. Too short and the valve will possibly not be long enough to thread into the water heater. I'll be building my own drain valve using a 3 quarter inch full port threaded ball valve, 3 quarter inch brass nipple, and a 3 quarter inch MIP by 3 quarter inch hose adapter. All these fittings and Teflon tape must be potable water approved. You can purchase a pre-made valve making this step easier, but I personally prefer to build my own valve because then I control the length of the shank by using a longer or shorter nipple and the quality of the shutoff valve. By using a full port ball valve, there's no restriction within the valve. This allows sediment to exit the tank much easier when flushing the water heater. Another important thing to keep in mind when building your own valve is to install the nipple in a way that the handle can still be opened and closed fully without interfering with the tank. There are two methods in swapping out the drain valve. The safest and manufacturer's recommended way is draining the complete tank with a bucket or a hose directed to the floor drain. The second method being putting the tank on an airlock and live swapping the valve. This is what I'll be demonstrating in this video. I'm opening the drain valve into a bucket to ensure the tank will go on an airlock and the water will slow down. So I can proceed with this method. It is very important that no faucets, toilets or valves within the residence are open during this process because this will allow air back into the system, removing the airlock. If the water doesn't slow down, proceed to draining the complete tank. Now knowing the water heater went on a proper airlock and the water slowed down, close the drain valve and start to loosen. It may be very tight and you may need someone to stabilize the tank so it doesn't move. Do not remove the valve completely just yet. Have the new valve ready in the open position and Teflon tape. Open the old drain once again to make sure that it's still on an airlock and quickly swap over. Wear gloves because there may be a bit of hot water leaking out and tighten the remainder with a wrench. To purge the air in the tank, open a hot faucet, then slightly open the cold water supply to the water heater. Once the faucet runs steady without any air spurting, open the cold water supply fully, close the hot faucet, and check for leaks. The final step is turning your control valve back to the on position. Well guys, there you have it. A job I probably completed a thousand times, and with a little bit of patience, you can complete too. A couple of points to take away from this video is that if you don't think the tank is on an airlock, to drain it completely. This is the safest way to do it. The other thing is that if it's a plastic drain valve, to always drain it completely. If you snap that plastic drain valve off, you'll soon find out what 40 to 50 gallons of water looks like. Another thing to keep in mind is shank length and to make sure that the replacement valve is going to be the same length as the original or longer. Thanks again guys for watching and if this video helped you out, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time. Shank length, shank length, shank length. You try to say that. <laughs>